question. Um, start with just the components. It's a module, modular uh, uh, building structure, meaning that you'll see the same parts in pretty much every turbine. Um, all right, so I want to draw this because that's how it helped me fully get it. So you have your mast and your tower, which is just the structure here. Uh, and then you have your rotor, which the rotor consists of the blades. Uh, and then this, that's the rotor. Uh, so you have your blades, the nose right here, and then this drive shaft. So all of that's spinning. That is the rotor. Um, then you have this nacelle, which is the big box you see. On the, back, on the back of it. Inside of that, you're going to find a whole bunch of stuff. The gearbox, the generator, there's computers in there that are going to know the wind speed, the direction of the wind, uh, when to turn on the, the turbine. Uh, so there's a whole complicated set of components inside of that. So, uh, and then when you get electricity coming out of it, it's going to go in to your transformer down here. So those are the main parts of this turbine. So we're going a little more in depth. Oh, this is a little, a little out of order. Um, so this is what we're going to talk about <laughs> in our basics. Um, okay, so the mast and the tower, there's in the older models, which we will see on the field trip, you have this lattice structure, this guy, um, which is metal and makes you go really tall. Uh, newer models are made of metal, but they're completely like encased, uh, just a better design. Um, and then just to see how large these are, that's one of them. Uh, they're set into a foundation and they're going to be super tall. Generally, the higher you set your tower, the stronger the wind. So, the higher you can get your turbine, the more potential energy. Uh, okay, the rotor. Again, the rotor is this generally three blades. You'll see some other varying types, but three is common. Uh, they're rigid, made of fiberglass, so they're going to, you know, withstand that high wind. And they spin in different directions, like that guy on the right is going to spin this way versus this way. Yes. So the rotors include the blades? Yes, so the rotor is going to be all three blades, this nose, and this guy is inside of the nacelle. But it's pretty much any, everything that's spinning due directly to the wind. Um, and and these things are huge. Like some are 55 meters, which is half of a football field in length. So when you add all three of those together, you're going to have a wingspan larger than a football field. So then scale. Wind. And then here's just another type for you to kind of conceptualize different models. Um, do we have a video of this? So no, but if you go it? to that, um, if you go there, I think it connects you to a YouTube. And it, basically, it oscillates. Mm -hmm. it's, so I know you can find something online that's a video. I'm not sure if it's YouTube, but it oscillates. It just goes. Yeah, it doesn't so make it, that noise exactly. So then your rotor would be like down here, and it's just kind of like moving at a whole bunch of it, depending on the wind. But that's going to generate your rotation. Uh, okay, and then the, the pod in this box, you have the main, the two main things. Well, the three main things are the gearbox, the generator, and a computer that's <laughs> driving the entire machine. Um, so the rotor is going to be spinning anywhere between like 10 to 30 rounds per minute. So you can look up at a turbine and watch, you can count how many times that spins around. 
The generator, however, needs anywhere from 1,000 to 1,800 rounds per minute. So you have to step up that speed, and that's what the gearbox is. The gearbox is this set of uh, many parts that's going to you know, just take that initial rounds per minute and up it. Wow. Um, so then when you look at it, this rotor is spinning around, and you have your gearbox here, which is all these little gears. And then that's going to connect to another spinning rod, and this is your generator. Okay, and then the computer that's also in there, like I said, that's going to take into account the wind speed, and it'll turn off, on or off the turbine. If there's not enough wind, it'll just, it'll just shut down so it's not wasting electricity. Um, and if it, you know, I think it's like 11 mile per hour wind, somewhere or less, it'll turn on. And then if it's like too much wind, it'll know to turn off so it doesn't break. Uh, all right. Okay, so that generator is huge. And actually, this whole, this whole nacelle is huge. Uh, you can land helicopters on these, some of them. So I like this picture because it shows you the scale of it. Um, that's a little man standing next to it. So the generator itself is uh, composed of these neodymium iron boron magnets. That's the, the common. Uh, material I use, and those are these chunks right here. Neodymium itself is a rare earth metal that's mined in China. Um, so that creates a lot of waste, like Hector was saying, like the process of extracting that. Um, and the reason that that material is used is just the efficiency of the generator uh, works best with that. Uh, you can see it uses a whole bunch of this material, uh, 600 kilograms. Um, okay, the next slide is going to clean this up. So, okay, this is the, this generator is one type of generator. Now there's an emerging technology on other types of generators that use, potentially can use less material. Um, and they're called direct drive. So in this generator, you have multiple magnets. And it gets a little complex when you're looking at the details, but you need all these multiple magnets to create an alternating current. Uh, in a direct drive model, one, you're using the rounds per minute from the rotor. to, and you have a continuous magnet, so you're not in this generator, you don't need this high rounds per minute. That's the main idea. You could operate at like 60 to 150 rounds per minute. So that's going to alleviate the need for a gearbox. And that gearbox is such a complicated piece of equipment that that's, that's the most maintenance intensive uh, bound to break part of the machine. So if you eliminate or at least reduce the size of the gearbox, you're going to have a lot less maintenance needs. Um, and then there's also a pretty cool technology coming out where they don't use magnets at all. So that would completely eliminate the need for this new dynamic uh, iron boron metal. Uh, sweet. Okay, and then the last part of it is after the generator, you're bringing down the electricity, which is your flow of electrons. And transformers, I don't know if you guys all know how they work. Um, they're kind of a wild piece of equipment. Um, and they come at varying scales. So like, you'll probably see one right out there. But basically what it's doing is it's either stepping up or stepping down the voltage. Uh, and they do that through the winding of coils. And I could not explain exactly how that happens, but so you have a high voltage coming in, and it would be set in a series of many, many coils, and that's connected to a magnet. And on the other side of that magnet, 
you would have less coils. And so the resulting flow of electricity that comes out of that is at a lower voltage. Sound good? So down here, we're going to take this and step up the voltage and put it on these massive uh, power frame. So those huge towers have such a high voltage that when they get to your residential house or whatever, you have to have another transformer that steps down the voltage so that it doesn't just blow you away when you plug it into the socket. So that's basically what a transformer does. So this is a little video. So that was my version of trying to explain to you what's going on. This is another Yeah, it's really just the maintenance and the upkeep of it, which is where most, most of your money to 